This video will cover identifying composite transformations, meaning we're given a graph with the triangle ABC, um, then it's mapped onto the triangle A prime B prime C prime, and that from there is mapped onto the double prime triangle. And so we're asked to identify first the transformation that maps ABC onto the primes. So if I look over here on the right, I see ABC, and it's getting mapped onto the prime triangle, A prime B prime C prime. Well, I didn't do a very good job of outlining that, but you see it there. So we work with this the same way that we worked with them the last time, except here we're not given that scaffolding, we're not given the table, we have to actually come up with that on our own. So I'm going to start with point A at 3, 1. And then that maps on to A prime at negative 1, 3. I have the point B at 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, maps on to B prime at negative 5, positive 4. Now remember, we could do this last step, C maps on to C prime, um, but it's not entirely necessary. As long as you get two of them done, you're okay. So now I look at the rule, x comma y maps on to, and I'm trying to think, how do I go from the pre-image, 4, 5, onto the image, negative 5, 4. It looks to me like they're switching x and y, but that's not the only thing that they're doing. Because when they put that y value in the front, they're also negating it. And you can see that happening here. This 5 gets moved to the front, and now it becomes a negative 5. So that transformation here is a rotation of 90 degrees. And you can see that happening on the graph. I move over one quadrant towards the left counterclockwise, and so that is a rotation of positive 90. My next step is to identify the transformation that maps A, B, C with the primes onto the double primes. So take a second just to list your coordinates for A prime mapping onto A double prime, and B prime mapping onto B double prime. Once you have those coordinates listed, try to figure out the rule between x comma y and what it maps on to. Once you have those things done, check back in with me and I'll have the answers here for you to check. When I look at this composition, it looks like in this single transformation, I'm taking x, y and mapping it on to x, negative y. The x values stay the same from a prime to a double prime but the y values change. They are becoming negated. So when I think about the transformation that's happening here, I notice that when I keep x, that means I'm reflecting over the x-axis. Keep x means reflect over x, and if you negate the y, that's just further um, confirmation that you're reflecting over the x-axis. Our last step here says to write the composition. When we write compositions, remember that we have something composed with something else. And in the far right spot, we put the first transformation, and the left spot, we put the second transformation. So first, I did the rotation of 90. So that goes in the far right. And then secondly, I did the reflection over the x-axis. So that goes in the spot on the left. And that there is our final answer for part C. Next, they're asking us to identify a single transformation, meaning one transformation, that maps A, B, C onto the double primes. So if I take a second just to look at A, 3, 1, mapping onto the double primes at negative 1, negative 3, I can come up with a rule based on what's happening here. X, Y gets mapped onto... Well, when I look at that, it looks like they're switching x and y, but then they're also doing something more to it. This positive 1 for the y becomes a negative 1. The positive 3 becomes a negative 3. So not only did they switch, but they also negated. And when we think about that rule, switch and negate both, I end up with a reflection over the line y equals negative x. And I just want to take a second to show you what that looks like up here on the graph. What we're saying is that we could have taken our original triangle ABC up there in purple and mapped it onto this double prime triangle down here in red by reflecting it over the line y equals negative x. And that line is the one that lies through, sorry, this 
here, where we start at 0, 0, we go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. And so if you look at this, it does look like we took the purple triangle ABC and flipped it over this line or reflected it over that yellow line, y equals negative x, to land right on top of the double prime triangle. So sometimes it happens that you could do a composition in one single transformation, but other times it has to stay a composition because there's not a single transformation that would map the original, the, the pre-image, onto the image. If you take a look at this next one, it's asking us to identify the compositions, composition of transformations performed that maps the original triangle ABC onto the double prime triangle. But when I look at this picture, all I notice is that I have the original triangle, ABC, and the double prime triangle. So I'm missing that middle step, that middle picture. So what we're going to do is first list the coordinates for A, B, and C. Then I'm going to say that I have an A prime, B prime, and a C prime. Now I don't know what those coordinates are, so I'll have to fill these ones in in just a minute. But I do know what the coordinates of A double prime, B double prime, and C double prime are. So take just a minute to list the coordinates for A, B, C, and A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. Then check back in here with me. Okay, so I have my coordinates listed for the pre-image, A, B, C, and the image, A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. And now my goal here is to figure out a transformation that would map between those two triangles, meaning the uh, image and its pre-image. So if I look at the triangles themselves on the graph, I notice that B is up here in this top left corner. But when I look at the uh, image B double prime, I notice that it's in the bottom left corner. So I'm taking it from the top left down towards the bottom left. And if you just think of that motion that you see my laser um, going in, it's looking like it's turning. And then a turn, as far as transformation goes, means a rotation. So I'm going to think about how I could rotate this in order to get that point B down towards the bottom corner, which would also then lift up C towards the top and A towards the right. Now if I'm doing that rotation, I don't want to rotate too far. So let's first try a rotation of 90. And that rule, remember, is negative y comma x. So I'm going to try it and we'll plot it and then we'll see if that'll help us. So I take this negative 5, move it to the front and negate it so it becomes positive, and keep that negative 3. Now I take this negative 1, move it to the front so it becomes positive, and keep the negative 5. Same type of thing down here, c to c prime, move that negative 2 to the front, negate it, and keep the negative 1. So now if I take a second to plot those points, I have 5, negative 3 is a prime, 1, negative 5 is b prime, and 2, negative 1 is c prime. It looks to me like the triangle that I just drew, the prime triangle, is in the same um, order, I guess you could say, as the double prime triangle, meaning it's facing in the same direction. B is down here in this bottom corner, same with B double prime. B prime, B double prime in the same position. Same with C prime and C double prime, and also A prime and A double prime. So when I'm looking at this next transformation, I want to figure out how do I shift this or slide this triangle, the prime triangle, so that I move it on top of the double prime triangle. And it looks like I'm moving left and then up. Left and then up. And so I notice that I'm moving left by 1. And if I move left, that's a subtraction of 1. 5 take away 1 is 4. 1 take away 1 is 0. So I'm correct in saying that we're moving left by 1, or subtracting 1 from the x values. When I take a look at that shift upwards, it looks like I'm moving 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up, plus 6. So I'm going to test that. Negative 5 plus 6 does put me at 1. Negative 3 plus 6 does put me at positive 3. So here, this transformation is a translation, a slide, by negative 1, 6. 
And my last step is to write the composition. And so I'm going to do that by using that same notation that we used earlier. I write that transformation first because that's what I did second, remember it's in the opposite order, composed with that rotation of 90. Again, the thing on the right comes first, and the thing on the left comes second. Go ahead and pause, rewind the video as needed, uh, and then check in with your practice, see if you can do this stuff on your own.